The meeting is now live. Right, uh, good evening ladies and gentlemen and welcome to this extraordinary meeting of Eden District Council. Um, this is being held virtually and not in a physical location following guidelines set out in section 78 of the Coronavirus Act 2020. It is an extraordinary meeting and as such has a single item on the agenda. Uh, but before I say more, I will hand you over to our monitoring officer who will go through um, the procedure relating to remote meetings. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Chair. Um, I think as you have rightly pointed out, the legislation that allows these meetings um, to partake. I'll just confirm that the various elements of the regulations are being complied with in that we are allowing officers, members and members of the public to participate in our meetings um, and their, our current rules of procedure as set out in our constitution continue to apply. This meeting is, as you said, being live streamed. It is also being recorded, so will be available um, after this meeting has finished. Um, just in relation to housekeeping, if I could remind members to please keep their cameras and their microphones off when they're not speaking, just to avoid any background noise. Um, and please turn both of them on when you are invited to speak by the chair. Um, by the chair. There is a chat function available tonight to report any technical issues or indicate that you wish to speak. Um, and as per usual, there is a four hour limit to our meetings. So if we haven't concluded our business in that time, we will have to adjourn the meeting and reconvene it at a later time. Voting tonight will be via unofficial recorded vote. So when your name is called out, please indicate verbally if you wish to be for, against, or whether you wish to abstain from the motion. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Um, the first item on the agenda is apologies for absence. I am aware of apologies for absence from councillors Dew, Lawson and Thompson. Are there any others of whom we know? Chair, not apologies, but just to inform you that councillor okay. Todd is currently present. I think he is now, but anyway, we shall confirm all that because the next procedure uh, is a roll call, which the monitoring officer will carry out. Um, if councillors will reply present or here uh, and uh, if they have an interest to declare, state it at that point. Uh, if you don't, there's no need to say no interest to declare. Just uh, um, respond to your name, please. OK, uh, monitoring officer, will you call the roll? Thank you, Chair. Councillor Armstrong. Present, Miss. <laughs> Councillor Baker. Present. Councillor Banks. Present. Councillor Chambers. Present. Councillor Clark. Present. Councillor Connell. Present. Councillor Derbyshire. Present. <clears throat> Councillor Isles. Present. I'd like to inform the chair I'm making the uh, audio recording of the meeting on my own purposes. Thank you. Councillor Fearon. Present. Councillor Greenwood. Present. Councillor Hanley. Present. Councillor Harker. Present. Councillor Holden. Present. Councillor Lancaster. Present. Councillor Lynch. Present. Councillor Martin. Present. Councillor McCall. Present. Councillor Meadowcroft. Present. Councillor Nicholson. Present. Councillor Patterson. Present. Councillor Rain. Present. Councillor Robinson. Present. <coughs> Councillor Ross. Present. Councillor Ruddell. <coughs> Councillor Ryland. Present. Councillor Sorry Cookson. Present, thanks to Sam of IT. <laughs> Councillor Sharp. Present. Councillor Simpkins. Present. Councillor Smith. Present. Councillor Taylor. Present. Councillor Todd. Councillor Tonkin. Present. Councillor Wicks. 
Present. Councillor Ruddell? Is Councillor Ruddell in the meeting? Uh, yes, he is. Present. Um, oh. Thank you, yeah. Councillor. Councillor Todd? Councillor Todd's not in the meeting. Is he not? Right, okay, thank you. That's the roll call complete, Chair. Uh, thank you very much. Um, there are also present a number of um, officers of the Council. Now, there's only one agenda item tonight. This is an extraordinary meeting. Uh, councils have been circulated with the information, but um, for the benefit of members of the public, I will quote from uh, the Constitution on Extraordinary Meetings, namely, the only item which may be considered at, at an extraordinary meeting is the matter for which the meeting has been called. No questions or notices on motion, uh, mo motions on notice in addition to this item will be permitted. Uh, that said, um, I'm going to introduce from the chair the sole agenda item, which is allocation of seats on committees. Just to explain uh, why we have to do this, it's a legal requirement that council approves um, reallocation of seats on committees, and that has become necessary by virtue of um, the division of uh, independent councillors into two groups. Uh, that has created an extra group on the council and uh, seats on committees must be proportionate to groups. Uh, for that reason, some adjustment has been necessary. Um, a further point to be made is that this is only a temporary fix because on the 6th of May, two by-elections will take place to fill vacancies on the council. Uh, as a result of that, regardless of the results as to who is elected, there will be 38 councillors rather than 36. And that will again mean an adjustment to the arithmetic. And so there will inevitably be one or two changes following on from that in terms of different groups allocation on committees and therefore that will affect personnel on committees. So this is a temporary but necessary measure because um, we have to legally approve uh, the membership of committees. So uh, this is our task tonight. There are two appendices. Appendix one gives you the maths uh, and the numbers allocated to various groups. There is one error uh, on the um, appendix one, which is 3.5, uh, which incorrectly gets the figures for the independent alliance and independent group. They're the wrong way around but the rest of the document has the figures right so this uh, doesn't make any difference and the second appendix which you will have councillors will have received um following discussion with group leaders uh, names uh, the individual members of different committees so our task tonight is to approve these two documents uh, as reported to us by the assistant director of legal and democratic services um before I seek a seconder to the proposal that uh, we consider this report, uh, are there any questions? Yes, uh, a question from Councillor Wicks. Councillor Wicks. Yes, thank you, Chair. Can I just clarify that Appendix 2 has been amended as per my email this afternoon after it came out at four o'clock. I'll have to ask the officer about that. Councillor Wicks, as far as I'm aware, it has been amended and um, there will be some slides that will be that will be put up that should show the correct um, allocation that you've made and apologies that it's um, that there was the error. OK. Uh, no Council problem, Nichols. as long as members are aware that they, the appendix two they received is not correct. I think two two versions were sent out. There was a second version. The emails with attachments or a couple uh, came out, so that may have been dealt with at that point. Councillor Nicholson has a question. 
Thank you, Chair. Uh, My question really is about the proposed appointments of members of the executive to um, committees, namely the Accounts and Governance um, Committee and uh, the Licensing Committee. Now, I mean, I've been a member of this council for 18 years and we moved on to the um, leader and uh, cabinet model in 2008. Um, since then, apart from the Accounts and Governance Committee, there has been um, no members of the executive on um, any council committees. Now, uh, and uh, indeed, the, I mean, there was um, mention of this in the um, in the constitution. Now, earlier I emailed the monitoring officer and I asked her to give members an indication of when and where this um, change was approved by this change was approved by council and I would welcome a uh, response to that point. Um, my, 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 my second point is that, that I would I like to raise an objection to, to the proposed appointment of council of the to the Accounts and Governance Committee on, on the grounds that I believe that she will have conflicts of interest because as the sources for the order, she is responsible for financial management and planning, including ensuring a balance and budget with the leader, financial services, procurement and procurement strategies, policy of general fund reserves. Now, now, I believe that, that there is a conflict of interest with, with the, um, the, the role of the, the and responsibility of the Accounts and Governance Committee, which basically is the Council's Audit um, Committee, and it has responsibility for external audit reports, internal audit reports, final accounts, reviewing and monitoring the operation of the Council's constitution, but also monitoring the operation of the Council's rules of procedure, accounting and audit rules, procurement rules, and the Code of Planning Conduct and Practice. Now, um, uh, I don't, Nicholson, I'm I sorry. Don't, please, I'm sorry, Councillor Nicholson. Councillor Nicholson, will you please? Uh, this is at this point we're dealing with questions. Debate will follow, okay. and the point you're raising, your second point, appears to me a debating point to be argued and perhaps uh, an amendment proposed. But can we please, at this point, deal with the question? You put a question. Thank you. Uh, if you will, and you'll get the opportunity to make your point uh, when I've, when there's a seconder for the motion and we move into debate. OK, OK. Uh, the question uh, related, I think, to um, uh, whether, if I interpret it correctly, members of the executive may sit on committees. Uh, national legislation simply relates to scrutiny committees and national legislation says that you can't be on the cabinet and be on a scrutiny committee. Uh, there's nothing in the legislation otherwise, and I don't think there's anything in our constitution um, that deals with this matter. I had a look. Um, however, I will refer it to the monitoring officer. Thank you, Chair. Um, from my perspective, I would just reiterate what you've just said. Um, as far as I'm aware, our constitution is silent in relation to executive members sitting on committees. And indeed, the there is no legislation as well. As you rightly point out, the legislation um, expressly prohibits um, executive or cabinet members from sitting on scrutiny committees, but nothing else. What I would say is that I suppose historically they haven't, um, but I think that's just been the, the nature of the, the political makeup and perhaps the groups have been larger, but we have um, our current political makeup is of um, more smaller groups. And I think it's, it, it is inevitable, there, but there is nothing expressly prohibiting them from sitting on these, um, in effect, regulatory committees. Uh, that having been said, the constitution is currently under review and councils can make their own provision, uh, but that uh, is in the future. Councillor Wicks, your question, please. Thank yes, you. Chair, my um, appendix one states that there's two members of the Independent Alliance to be overviewed on on overview and scrutiny, uh, and yet the name sheet just names just one. 
I'm not sure that uh, there's certainly a, a, a matter of every right to raise, but yeah, uh, council, um, if, monitoring officer, please. Yeah. If I may assist, um, Councillor Wicks, you are correct, and it was an omission. If you count the members, you you are right. Um, in the appendix that was sent out, there were only eleven named members from that committee, and there should be um, twelve. That has has been rectified, and when we show the slides, you will see that. Um, there are two members nominated from the Independent Alliance for that overview and scrutiny committee. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you for raising that point, uh, uh, Councillor Wicks, and that is certainly a question. Um, a request from Councillor Chambers, and a perfectly legitimate one, is can members please switch off cameras when not speaking? Yeah, thank you very much. Um, now, uh, are there any further? I don't want to shut off debate, and I'm sure there will be debate. As, uh, but are there any specific questions before I get a seconder, and then then we move on to a presentation by the officer uh, relating to what is proposed? Could I have a seconder, please, indicated in the chat function? Thank you. Uh, that's Councillor Rudall, am I correct? No, Councillor Robinson, I beg your pardon. Oh, Councillor Rudall, MR, there's two MRs. Councillor Rudall, second, yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. So we have a proposer and seconder, uh, and now it's time that I stop talking and um, I'll hand you over to our officer uh, who will take us through the details of the report. Chair, again, sorry to be pedantic. Could Councillor Ruddle verbally indicate that he's happy to second that motion, please? You're quite right. Councillor Ruddle, speak, please. You can, Chair. I will second the motion. Thank you. Monitoring officer. Chair, I, I'm not sure there's much for me to say here. Obviously, we have um, reconsidered the allocation to the seats based on um, our legislative responsibilities in relation to political balance. As a result of that, we have asked group leaders to um, sort of have a conversation with their members um, in relation to if there were any changes of numbers or if they simply wanted to reallocate members to committees. And these are the responses we have. Um, I fully appreciate and I apologise to members that the Appendix 2 that came out to you this afternoon um, is not the most recent copy. Unfortunately, um, there were a couple of errors and omissions. And again, I can only apologise for that. So the slides that are up in front of you um, and we will scroll through them um, will show what the current um, allocation is proposed to be. Um, um, given that group leaders have suggested these to us, I, I don't anticipate any questions, um, but Chair, if you will allow them. I'm sure I can assist if I can. Thank you very much. So we now move into discussion. I certainly know that Councillor Nicholson uh, has a point to make and I will not cut you off, Councillor Nicholson. Now we're into debate, so please go ahead. Thank you. As I said, um, you know, I, I want to lodge an objection to the proposed appointment of Councillor Greenwood, um, who is our resources portfolio holder, to the Accounts and Governance Committee. The Accounts and Governance Committee is um, the Council's audit um, committee and as such is responsible for ensuring um, high fiscal standards, probity and propriety in um, all our accounting and financial matters, as well as some other things. Now, given the responsibilities of the resources portfolio holder, who is accountable to council for the fair and proper conduct of the activities which lead up to the areas that I've just mentioned for accounts and governance, I cannot see how um, she can maintain neutrality and uh, um, in um, the, the conduct of the affairs of the Accounts and Governance Committee. So in my view, there is a very distinct um, conflict of interest there 
because on the one hand, you have um, one person or you have the same person responsible for um, policy and operational matters in financial affairs in the in the course of their activities as portfolio holder, yet that person is proposed to be sitting on the Accounts and Governance Committee, which is audit and not scrutiny, but um, it is oversight of the audit and implementation of um, audit recommendations. So I think the perceptions of the public will be that there is a conflict of interest stand there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, monitoring officer, uh, I'm not sure that is there anything that you feel you can say other than to confirm what what uh, the current position is in the constitution. I can try and assist chair um, I suppose from my perspective in the role that I have um, I and all members have this this expectation of them that they would act in the best interest of the council and with integrity at all times. Um, so I feel that obviously there would be an onus on Councillor Greenwood that if she felt that there was um, a conflict of interest in anything that was brought up at accounts and governance, also in relation to her role as a cabinet or portfolio holder meeting, um, that she would be able to identify that and either declare an interest at the time or have a have a conversation with me and seek guidance. Um, I would add that it's up to the individual councillors um, opinion to declare that and if she felt that actually she was declaring an interest too often then we could potentially assess that what i would say is that from an accounts perspective as well if that's go that's a full council matter as opposed to an executive matter so i don't feel that um council greenwood could be compromised on that thank you very much councillor <laughs> Ayers wishes to speak thank you chair um, as chairman of the Accounts of Governance, um, I'd like to say that I've got no objection to this appointment. The other thing we've got to bear in mind, for the last few years, the council has been in a different situation and a very pleasingly different uh, situation in that we've got quite a wide diversity of, uh, uh, of groupings in the council. It's no longer just uh, divided into two or three and because of that, and the limited number of councillors, uh, that does reduce the number of uh, kind of members that are in any political group. So I think that it's inevitable that we're going to be quite uh, short-handed in some respects, and the division of the independents into uh, two groups has actually further exacerbated this. Uh, I'm very happy. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm very happy with uh, Councillor Greenwood being on the committee. I think she'll uh, bring a, uh, a fair and important aspect to the, the debate. And I've got no objection whatsoever. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. I mean, I think it, it, I must remind my councillors again, of course, that these are not very short term arrangements. And um, the, the committees, inevitably, uh, will. will um, be reconfigured to some extent as a source of will chairmanship of all committees um, and at the annual general meeting. However, uh, we certainly are making arrangements for the next few weeks and I see that the Councillor Greenwood uh, would like to speak. So, Councillor Greenwood. Thank you, Chair. I'd just like to thank everybody for their, their comments and their questions. I'd like to thank uh, Councillor Nicholson for raising the points and for the monitoring officer for responding to that and for Councillor Iles' input. And I'd just like to say that I understand exactly what Councillor Nicholson is, uh, is saying and I understand his points. But as I would, I would just like to say that um, I, I would, would always, always, and I think Council Nicholson has known me long enough, enough, I would always, always seek the monitoring, monitoring officers as um, advice, advice on any matter, matter over which I was, I was unsure and certainly having been, been on a council on governance in the past, past I, I think I would be confident in, in um, understanding in the issues and being able to, to recuse, recuse myself if, if necessary, necessary um, and, and take the advice of the monitoring officer. So I'd just like to reassure members that although I understand all of the issues and council 
and the customs reservations, I would like to assure everybody that I will take all of that on board and, um, and take advice where necessary. Thank you. Uh, okay, thank you very much for that. We have Councillor Martin. Martin. Yeah, I'd just like to ask, I'm not just a shortage of standing deputies on overview and scrutiny. Um, is that an issue? I'm not quite sure, but it's a shortage of standing deputies. For the independent uh, independent alliance. I'm looking at it, I see one from the independent alliance and one from the independent group. Chair, may I assist? However, yeah, yeah, go ahead. The appendix that they're rolling out um, is incorrect, so you'll note that the independent alliance has been in, um, allocated two seats which is Council of Anne and Council of Patterson for oh, overview and scrutiny. They have no standing deputies because the three remaining members of the group are all part of the executive and therefore they are unable to sit on the group. So they have two members and um, they have no deputies. So, so those of them are at um, member 10 and they simply would not have representation on the meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you for that raising that announcement on my my apology for misinformation. Um, um, I was reading from, from the first draft, draft which is evident, in another way, way um, um, uh, Council that uh, uh, a second draft was produced in response to, to uh, your points. Um, Councillor Ryland. Thank you, Chair. Um, this meeting has been called because of the split in the independents. Um, I'm not in accord with the recommendations as set out at two. I believe them to be unfair and the split was predetermined and engineered to actually further consolidate power on the planning and shut down scrutiny. My amendment I'd like to propose, please, is that the allocations on overview and scrutiny committee be the independent group two, the independence alliance group one, and that the allocation of seats on the licensing committee be independent group one and independent alliance group two. The allocation of all of the seats to other groups as given in the report. And should it uh, seek a seconder, I'd like to reserve the right to sum up and speak after everyone has spoken, Chair. Thank you. Do we have a seconder for this? Alton Nicholson seconded. Yep. Right, we have this proposed amendment uh, to switch around the um, allocation between um, overview and scrutiny and licensing uh, of which group of independents gets two and which gets one. Uh, I take it that all councillors are clear what is being proposed. Does anybody wish to speak on this? Chair. Yes. Yeah. May I just point out that the um, allocation of seats, um, I'm not talking about the nomination of members, I'm simply talking about the numbers that has been done by officers in line with legislation, as is required of us to have pol um, political balance. Um, so I would point out that if members were minded to change the allocations, we would no longer be politically balanced as is required of us by the legislation. Thank you very much. Um, bear that in mind, members. However, I don't want to suppress some um, wish to speak. Uh, and I see that Councillor Rain, wishes, Councillor Robinson wishes to speak. Councillor Robinson. Thank you, Chairman. I was just um, cutting in to say. Chair, may I interject on a point of information, please? Point of order. And I indicated a, 
I wish to second the motion. The motion is not seconded, therefore. Um, oh, I beg your pardon. So I'd seen you've seconded it. Yes, it, I can confirm that. I thought I'd said Calton Nicholson was seconding it. I'm sorry, Calton Nicholson seconding. Yes. Well, normally, normally our procedure is that there has to be um, a verbal intimation of that. I picked okay, that. Okay. Would you like to give a verbal intimation of it? Well, I, I well, um, and I also wish to speak on it. You want to and, speak uh, now or reserve your right to speak no, later? No, I want to speak now. And I want to say that I'm very pleased to second this amendment. It's a modest and reasonable request and accepting it, I think will maintain the proportional representation on the council's committees. I'm somewhat troubled by the circumstances surrounding the need for the revised committee place allocations. As I understand the matters, it follows a decision by the five members of the Independent Alliance to sanction the four members of the independent group for not following orders in voting for measures proposed by the administration. The Herald Courts Councillor Mrs Robinson. Point of stating, order, Chairman, point stating, of order. Yes, you can this disagree. Is not this is not part of a debate. Mr Chairman, I, I think it is because it is relevant to the matter in hand. You are mute, Chair. Councillor Nicholson, uh, will you briefly Complete your point, then Mrs. Rob then Councillor Robinson will respond. Yeah. The Herald Courts Councillor Mrs. Robinson stating, yes, you can disagree, but you don't vote against your own administration. She mentioned ratification of the budget, and I've also heard there were issues around the decision of the planning committee to refuse consent for the Vereda House project. Every group on the council must be capable of handling members' dissent. Usually by engagement with members, but that is far from the forty of this administration. Councillor Nicholson, I'm sorry. Oh, this is I'm very sorry, Councillor Nicholson. Please, uh, you. This is not really about the amendment. The amendment is about the numbers between two committees, and I really don't think this is appropriate to start saying what was said in the Cumberland and Westman Herald about um, the way that uh, groups handle their internal affairs. Chairman, I, I must disagree with you on the grounds on the grounds that what I'm saying is relevant to the reasons why we're here. If had none of this happened, we would not have been here tonight and the um, former position would have be, been prevailed. But members need to understand why we're here tonight. The public need to understand why we are here um, tonight and um, and I'm and, I, and I'm really not going to be, um, you know, closed down. Really, I'm not. Unless you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Robinson. Thank you, Chairman. The point I was going to make, in actual fact, the monitoring officer came in um, and actually said that we uh, to go with the amendment would would mean that we weren't politically balanced. Thank you, Chairman. OK, we have other speakers, but I would urge members that this is about the adjustment between two committees. It's not an argument about the It's not a dissection of the disagreements within the independent uh, uh, group, which led to their splitting into two. These have been aired already. Uh, Councillor Ray. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I was going to um, go along with the uh, amendment. Um, um, I've taken on board what the monitoring officer has said, but um, it does puzzle me that something uh, as important as scrutiny has got member more members of the administration on where licensing, where we don't don't meet very often, um, has got the two men members of the original independent group. Um, I've got to th uh, think about this while uh, the debate goes on. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Lynch. Councillor Lynch. It's an observation. I just wish the officer would, 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 would get it right first time. Thank you. Um, now I think Councillor Sorry Cookson's, uh, that's not a, 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 um, a debating point, is it? It's just some information about um, 
uh, your uh, being able to participate in the meeting, which we're very glad of. Um, Councillor Isles. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, the monitoring officer says that uh, this amendment would actually put it as odds with the actual law. I'm very unhappy about that, and I can't possibly support this amendment. Thank you. Councillor Clark. Councillor Clark. Yeah. Thanks. I am here now. Good evening. Good evening. Well, my main grievance is the proposed allocation of committee seats, which falls far short of expectations in fairness, not only to the long service and experience of two of our group members, but also to the democratic balance of power within this council. The allocation mechanism with which these figures were arrived at may be may accord with electoral law, but are nonetheless skewed in the Rainbow Alliance's favour. A real test of the independent position will be their apparent lack of members to supply the necessary members. Well, we've already heard about that and I have very much grave doubts about that. As, uh, and that's it. Thank you, Councillor Clark. Uh, are there any other members wishing to speak? Remember the motion before us uh, proposed by the amendment proposed by Councillor Ryland was to switch the allocation of independent allies and independent group. Um, let's get this one right. Uh, it was from licensing um, to remind me of the other one. It was overview scrutiny. and scrutiny, was it not? Overview yeah. and scrutiny to switch the two and one. Um, overview and scrutiny currently has alliance to group one. Uh, and um, licensing has Group 2, Alliance 1, and uh, Councillor Ryland wished to change those two around. That's the um, uh, amendment, and that is what Councillor Nicholson has seconded. So that's a reminder. Is there anybody else wishing to speak before we vote on the amendment? Uh, yes. If I may, and I know I've said this, this point before, but I would reiterate that there is legislation in place that requires us to ensure that our committees are politically balanced. It is a matter of mathematics. Um, there is rounding up and there is rounding down um, in terms of the percentages and how it's worked out. And I appreciate that not all groups and members um, may may feel that it's fair um but it is the way that it is it is worked out as we are required to do by law thank you very much bearing that in mind uh counter i'm afraid normally one speech uh on an amendment is um uh is what is um permissible uh in the constitution so I'm sorry, uh, I don't think we can have a further contribution unless uh, you've been personally criticised. Sorry. Um, Councillor Taylor. Yes, I'd just like to um, to ask, is it um, is it lawful to propose an amendment which is unlawful? I mean, uh, should we should we proceed with the amendment? I'll have to refer to the monitoring officer for her advice. You're muted. You're muted. You're muted. My apologies, Chair. I couldn't get my button to turn on. Mm -hmm. Um, I suppose, in short, we would be acting out with of legislation if this motion um, were to be passed. Um, if it was passed, then we would have to. Um, we would need to look at the situation again. Um, but 
we have worked out the numbers as per statute um, and I would urge members, um, given their role in the community, to act in accordance with the legislation. Thank you very much. Uh, what I'm proposing to do from the chair is that we will take this amendment, but councillors will need to bear in mind what the monitoring officers have said. Chairman, yes, uh, Chief Executive. Yeah. Thank you. Just, just to be clear, Chairman, if officers receive an unlawful instruction from the council, they will not carry it out. Right. Uh, is that understood? Uh, no, I'm sorry, Andy, I didn't hear it. Uh, right. The Chief Executive said that if officers uh, under in any circumstances are given an unlawful instruction from the council, they won't carry out that instruction. Um, I think we'll my uh, decision as chair is we'll take this vote uh, that officers uh, will have to consider should they receive such an instruction uh, from the council whether they can possibly carry it out but I don't want to um, suppress the wish of councillors to express a view and therefore I'm going to ask that the uh, monitoring officer goes through the rules remember the amendment's been proposed will you please respond for or against I did ask to sum up chair please Righto, uh, you have that right. Thank you. Before we go to the vote. And then no further speeches, please. No, I shall uh, sum up as is my right. Um, you made a comment before, Chair, that everything has been aired. It actually hasn't. Uh, we sadly find ourselves extricated from the Rainbow Alliance, a position that we were not allowed even a right of a reply. We had to find out the reason via a newspaper. I'd like to add here that we were told when we initially signed up by Councillor Robinson, and I quote, that we remained independents and could vote how we wished and there wouldn't be any falling out, end of quote. Clearly, that was not the case. The meeting that we had was held covering just 60 seconds no reasonable discussion, no questions allowed and conducted in a very abnormal manner when we had all been friends and dined in each other's houses. But we are where we are. A council is only as good as its scrutiny. And I believe these allocations unfair and we have been silenced and denied being a proofreader, a second voice and the conscience of the council and all that scrutiny does. And it ultimately fulfills the role of keeping the executive to account. I appeal to all members sense of fair play to support my amendment. Thank you, Chair, I'm obliged. Thank you, Councillor Ireland. Uh, we'll now proceed to the vote. Could members who are not speaking switch their cameras off, please? Uh, monitoring officer. Thank you, Chair. You, you call the roll, please. Uh, remembering, reminding us ourselves of what this proposal is. Um, it's not about the rights and wrongs of the uh, uh, division among the independents, though you may feel that underpins it. It is simply about uh, the moval, the moving uh, two and one between two committees. Are you happy with that um, summary of the amendment or would you like me to reiterate no, it? No, please reiterate. Okay, thank you. The, um, the proposal, the amended proposal that has been put forward by Councillor Ryland is that the allocations on the overview and scrutiny committee in relation to the independent and alliance and independent alliance group are that the independent members group has two members and the independent alliance has one and that the allocation of seats in relation to the licensing committee is that the independent group has one and the independent alliance has two and that the allocations as to the other committees be as they are set out in appendix one and two of the reports so shall we move to the vote councillor armstrong for councillor baker against councillor banks against 
Councillor Chambers? For. Councillor Clark? For the motion, sorry. Councillor Connell? Against. Councillor Derbyshire? Against. Councillor Isles? I cannot support an illegal motion against. Councillor Fearon? For. Councillor Greenwood? Against. Councillor Against. Councillor Hart. Against. Councillor Holden. Against. Councillor Lancaster. For. Councillor Lynch. For. Councillor Martin. For. Councillor McCall. Against. Councillor Meadowcroft. For. Councillor Nicholson. For. Councillor Patterson. Against. Councillor Rain. Abstain. Councillor Robinson. Against. Councillor Ross. Against. Councillor Ruddle. Against this illegal motion. Councillor Ryland. For. Councillor Sorry Cookson. I believe Councillor Henry um, Councillor Sorry Cookson isn't in the meeting at the moment. Right, Councillor Sharps. Against. Councillor Simpkins. Against. Councillor Smith. Against. Councillor Taylor. Against. Councillor Todd. For. <laughs> Councillor Tonkin. Against. Sorry, Councillor Tonkin, could you repeat that? Against. Councillor Wicks. For. Chair, I make that 12 votes for the motion, 19 against with one abstention. So the motion falls. Thank you. Uh, we now then return to the original proposal uh, put by myself, seconded by Councillor Ruddle, which is the, uh, the acceptance of the report. Uh, is there anybody else who hasn't, sp who didn't speak on the original motion who would like to do so? I don't see any indication in the chat function. Therefore, uh, can we now then proceed to the vote on uh, the acceptance of the two of the report um, and the detail, details in the two appendices one and the updated appendix two? Monitoring officer, would you call the roll, please? Thank you, Chair. Just for, to be clear for members, the um, what you're voting on in terms of Appendix 2 is the slide shown to you um, during this meeting, as opposed to the Appendix 2 that was sent out to you earlier, um, which had um, some errors on it um, and some omissions. So the slides that um, are up now are the updated ones. So, Councillor Armstrong. Against. Councillor Baker? For. Councillor Banks? For. Councillor Chambers? Against. Councillor Clark? Against. <laughs> Councillor Connell? For. Councillor Derbyshire? For. Councillor Isles? For. Councillor Fearon? 
Against. Councillor Greenwood. Four. Councillor Hanley. Four. Councillor Harker. Four. Councillor Holden. Four. Councillor Lancaster. Against. Councillor Lynch. Abstain. Councillor Martin. Against. Councillor McCall. Four. Councillor Meadowcroft. Against. Councillor Nicholson. Against. Councillor Patterson. Four. Councillor Rain. Against. Councillor Robinson. Four. Councillor Ross. Four. Councillor Ruddle. Four. Councillor Ryland. In the interests of British fair play, against. <laughs> Councillor, sorry, Coulson. Councillor Sharp. Four. Councillor Simpkins. Four. Councillor Smith. Four. Councillor Taylor. Four. Councillor Todd. Against. Councillor Tonkin. Four. Councillor Wicks. Against. Chair, I make that 19 votes for the motion, 12 against with one abstention. So that resolution is passed. Thank you very much. Um, so uh, that's carried. And as I've said before, it's a temporary measure because, of course, in the light of by-elections, uh, there will ine inevitably be some adjustment to this allocation. However, uh, that lies in the future and that won't be before our next meeting which is scheduled for the 29th of April 2021 when uh, we shall meet again and hopefully have an enjoyable meeting. Thank you very much for your attendance tonight and good night. Good night Andy. Good night. Good night Chair.